The pickup is lifting. The tractor off the ground. No! That's a disaster! Hello and welcome along and welcome back to the Old Stream Farm. We are headed up to the shop in our TGF, our Antonio Carrero TGF 10900. Uh, because looking in here, our grass field is actually ready to harvest and ready to cut. So we're going to be concentrating on that field today. Starting off with getting ourselves a brand new mower on here. And I think the best mower for us uh, are the ones that we've been using elsewhere. Uh, we've got uh, the this little Nova Disc set here, which is a really nice set. All fairly low horsepower. Uh, 70 horsepower on that one, 60 and 50. So I am going to grab the middle one. Will be a little uh, bit less power for our uh, tractor here, which is a 70 horsepower tractor. Uh, we're going to go with yellow rubber and uh, black rubber. And so uh, sort of base setup. We've got a choice of tank and weight set. I think we're going to go with both. Uh, we are not going to have the swath plate because we're going to be making hay today. So we, we don't want to swath it. And we want to put the green logo on both the front and the back. So 7,200 is a good start for us here today. And we'll grab that. So we're going to need four pieces of equipment today. And hopefully the amount of money that we earned off our uh, lettuce last time. That should mean that we have enough to do all the grass work. Uh, by the time we're looking at harvesting our grapes, we should have had another batch of lettuce ready to sell and do. So, uh, yeah, we've got that to load up at some point. And I think what we might do is just pull the trailer out and start loading lettuce up on that. Now, I'm looking at this. No, we, we should be all right. We've got... Uh, it's quite a big mower on the back of this little tractor but it's uh, it should be fine we got 600 kilograms on the front so i'm not expecting us to be very rear heavy with this and uh, and i think this is this is going to be absolutely fine we want to cut all the grass around the field today not uh, all the grass around the farm today sorry not just the grass around the field uh we've got all the stuff around our grapes or our uh, vineyard vines to do as well so uh, especially field one down here where we have a lot of grass sitting all around it so uh, i'd like to get that cut today as well if i can uh we've got to get this well we've got to get this cut row uh cut tethered uh <laughs> swathed or, or windrowed uh and uh bailed and then roll this field so yeah there's a lot for us to do today we're going to start off though by doing the outer edge and the headland uh, and this is going to help get this field ready ready for uh doing some uh for doing the fertilizing with as well because just cutting it gives us a stage of fertilization which is uh, pretty cool. Coming up to the end of the first round around the field. We're going to turn around and go back the other way. Go back that up. And then we don't have to drive on our crops anymore. Or on our grass anymore. And uh, yeah, should have a fairly quick go round. This is moving swiftly, this tractor with this mower. I'm, uh, I'm impressed with how well this setup works, despite the fact of how big this is. I love how maneuverable this little tractor is. We are just turning into the corners and making right angle turns to go round. And it's having no issue with it. We're not missing any grass at all. It is absolutely cracking. Um, I love it. I'm still umming and erring about the three point, whether we want that on, on there all the time. Um, I think in real life, you wouldn't be removing the three point off the front of a tractor. 
uh, all the time. And we do need it on here to do the defoliating uh, later. So, yeah, it's it's a, a piece of kit that I think would be left on there all the time on here. Uh, I don't think we'd do it the other way around. Uh, so, uh, yeah, leaving it on there makes sense. It uh, also gives us the opportunity to add some extra weight onto the front of the tractor if we ever need to. But look at look at that perfect right angle turn into that corner. And just cleaning everything up and just making it so neat and tidy. This is absolutely brilliant. What a great little precision piece of kit. Down to the last bit on the main part of the field. Uh, just got a little bit to clear up down the far end. Lining up in cab uh, seems to be pretty good going around there like that. I don't think we've got... Oh, we've got a little strip of grass here. We can mow. Yeah, get that cleared up. Um, but otherwise... It's just this little section down here. So down and in, and we'll follow the curve around. Keep going around our bit here. Yeah, see, just turn. Neatly clear everything up. It's just such a great setup, this. I love this. Really, really love this. Wow. I, I, I knew I was... Knew I was going to have a good time with this DLC, but these little tractors just work perfect on this kind of farm. Where you don't need a huge amount of horsepower, where you're doing a lot of stuff that is just sort of smaller work most of the time. And needing something just to, to hop around. Uh, absolutely brilliant for a farm where uh, you are, yeah, you're just doing small stuff. Works brilliantly. Uh, and we're going to expand the farm eventually so that we have more uh, grapes and more vines. And we're not going to need much more than this kind of tractor. We might need another tractor uh, just to do stuff with and, and keep stuff going. But yeah, not going to need much more horsepower than we're currently running on here. 10 past 10 and we are back up at the shop to grab our second piece of kit. So leave that running out here for a moment while we pop in. And that is going to be a tether. So let's pop down here, grab ourselves a tether. And uh, I'm going to grab this uh, Potinger for 5,480. Uh, it's, again, it's a mod from the Mod Hub, a little bit cheaper. We can go either go the yellow and the red. I seem to be going for the, the yellow and red setup. Uh, I'm going to go ground wheel mounted for this, which is a little bit more. And we can either go white or silver. I'm going to go white wheels on it. Uh, I quite like that. Design color. Oh, design color will go black. There we go. Uh, 5,830. So we'll buy that. Uh, and that should be perfect for us as well. So we're down to 27,000. But we've got two pieces of kit so far. The most expensive piece is going to be getting a baler. And I don't know how much the baler is. I'll have to check that out in a minute. It may be we end up with the, the little baler, um, which I don't really want to do. Or we might end up having to hire a baler uh, is the other thing. But uh, while we can buy stuff, we will buy stuff. And then we'll uh, we'll deal with the rest later. Back to our field and we'll unfold our tether. And we're going to go round it clockwise, which is the way the majority of the field was done. Um, and the great thing about this is this should take us even less time than it did to cut. Because this will do two rows at a time. And uh, yeah, and again, actually that looks even better on the back of this than the, uh, the mower did. One piece of kit I really wish I had, which we uh, which we don't seem to have available to us in FS22, is in the Alpine DLC, there was a great little windrower. Uh, it was only about four meters wide, uh, but it was a dual, a dual comb windrower. And uh, I don't think it's available in FS22. It would be really nice if it was, though, because that would be perfect to go with these little tractors. 
uh, on here and uh, and and allow us to uh, to get those collected or to to get this wind road up fairly easily and quickly i think it was only a 60 horsepower wind rower as well so it just absolutely perfect for this sort of setup i need to go and see if i can find it i think today we're probably going to end up buying something that is a single comb i think that's the only thing that will fit on the back of here and probably the only thing that's affordable for us as well uh we don't have a huge amount of money to spend on that especially if as i suspect our baler is going to be fairly expensive as i was saying before we do have a baler lined up that will work on this tractor uh it is around baler i don't know if it's going to work and uh and and be affordable or whether we might have to uh lease it instead i know there might be a couple of comments uh today saying why don't you just feed the sheep grass uh bail up the the grass and uh and do that and save yourself a load of money um because i i don't find that particularly realistic um it would be uh, if i was creating silage bales and selling those yes i'd take a couple of grass bales give them to the sheep and it would be all good uh however as we're looking to store these for a little while and as a result just sort of keep them uh, keep them about so that we can feed our sheep over a longer period of time uh, i don't think it's realistic for me to to keep grass bales around for a longer period of time i think it would make more sense for me to have uh some hay bales kicking about uh, as we do have a few kicking about at the moment but going forwards we're looking to be a little bit more self-sufficient on that look at that this has just zipped through this field completely done and it's half past 11 we have a good chance of getting all of this work done today we're going to put our new piece of kit in the shed here which is where we're storing all our equipment disconnect it perfect right let's head back up the shop and get ourselves a windrower so I am still running by, uh, one day months on here. I nearly said five day months. We're running one day months on here. And so this is why I'm trying to get this job all done today. What have we got here in the way of Winrose? So we've got the uh, the little sip favorite 254 for 5,000. And we've got the little poting, poting atop for, for uh, three for two for five thousand nine hundred i think that is going to be our best bet as i said we don't have the uh the the double comb one of this that was within the alpine dlc in fs19 i really would like that i think that would go perfect for what we're doing on here and actually perfect for what i'm doing on no man's land as well speaking of which and no man's land will be back later this week don't worry, I have not uh, ended that series. I wanted to concentrate on here uh, just for a few days because we've got the DLC in and the DLC does fit this map really, really nicely and what we're trying to do on here. So it made sense to uh, hang around with this for a few days. While I'm here, how much is our baler? So baler's in here. 30,000. Ah, yeah, I want this. I want the case baler. But it is 30,000. So, oh, that's not good. We are going to probably have to rent that for today. And then when we get a little bit of money in later, uh, actually buy it for the next round. Uh, makes sense. You know, if we don't have enough money to do the whole thing, then, uh, then we are going to have to uh, lease an item. But if we're only leasing that baler for today then we should be all right going counterclockwise round the field first this time the idea being that we can then go clockwise for the second run and then we do that the whole way round and make sure that we uh, make sure that we're creating larger windrows for less journeys around the field with the 
baler when we get it on here. Uh, the alternative, actually, the alternative is a forage wagon. Uh, that's still 30,000. I think there are forage wagons on the mod hub that might be cheaper. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I think a baler is probably still our best bet. Because uh, I'd probably have to put in a hayloft or something in order to deal with uh, a forage wagon full of uh, hay instead. This job here is really putting the maneuverability of this tractor to the test. I'm trying to keep the front wheel just inside the row here because the way this wind rower works is that I need to incorporate the whole height of the wind rower in in order to make sure it, it makes a nice single solid pile. Uh, I tried to put it next to it and it just ended up creating two piles really close. And I don't know if the baler will pick up. So, yeah. Down that road there, it gets a little bit weird. But, that's, uh, yeah, that's that row done. Need to go back in and go counterclockwise again. Uh, get ourselves our second row up. And actually, need to be further over than that. Otherwise, I am not going to actually get the row. Yeah, we want to be about there-ish. Perfect. So, okay. That tells me where to put my front wheels. With two headlands done, I'm now going to start working my way across the field and uh, and creating just some rows inside. It makes it a little bit easier to turn around. It means we miss less in the corners. And uh, yes, it's a little bit more fiddly, but should work absolutely fine for us here. And uh, and yeah, with this uh, the top end of this field being a little bit fiddly as well, it will work out better for us. But this little, little tractor has done everything today really, really well. We are down to a half fuel, so we are going to have to refuel this in a bit. Uh, but that shouldn't be a big problem. I don't think this takes a massive amount of fuel either. I don't know if we have a fuel uh, a fuel station on the farm is the only thing. So we might need to deal with that uh, at some point. All in all, though, this little tractor is doing a stupendous job of everything I'm throwing it today, which I kind of thought it would. Uh, these tractors strike me as being great little uh, grass tractors as well as being great tractors for use in a vineyard so while the small part of the field is done we are now into the longer bit and it's uh yep still working really well i i'm gonna be yeah i'm gonna have plenty of hay off this this year we should be all right for quite a while i think with the amount of sheep we've got and the amount of hay we'll get off here um i think we might get somewhere between half a dozen and a dozen bales off here would be really good i mean that that would be an ideal number uh that's before we've fully fertilized this field as well i'm fully fertilizing this field and turning the grass field around today should be easy uh we should be able to get some rollers and get it rolled if we have a look on here we can see that uh, where are you? There we go. Fertilized. Uh, take everything off. Yep, there we go. Uh, it's got a stage of fertilization on it, which is brilliant. So we should be able to get that. I don't know if rolling it for the fertilizing will also mean that it's it's counted as being rolled. Uh, because, of course, we forgot to do that when we, bay, uh, when we originally planted this field. So... Uh, Hopefully that will uh, that will count. It will be an interesting thing to test. I kind of wonder if if we rolled it first and then rolled it again. So one with the grass roller and one with a field roller. Whether that would make a difference. Last row. A little bit of clean up to do. Just bringing the last few bits into here. And then we are going to go and, well, rent the baler, I think is what we're going to have to do. Uh, that little case baler should be perfect for us. Oh, I don't know, actually. 
Oh, that's an olive harvester, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so no, nope, we don't have an option there for a baler. I did hope that that might happen, uh, that we might get a baler available in there. What I'm going to do, though, is lease it and, and maybe we'll end up with a baler down the road that uh, will do what we want. Everything getting put away. So we can then put this in this shed. And with this stored in here, we can head back up to the shop and grab ourselves a baler and get this field bailed up. Yeah, even if we do have to lease it for now. As I mentioned before, the baler we want is this one. Uh, it's actually leasing it should work out okay for us. Wow, it's... Yeah, that, that will work out fine. So it only cost us 1,000... Uh, 1,530 to lease that. I think it's, I think it's horsepower is okay. Uh, what is it? Horsepower on that is 45 horsepower. Well within our little tractor here. So that's fine. And I think we already have a bale spike back at the farm. Oh, look at the size of that. That's a little bit crazy. <laughs> that baler looks huge on the back of this. It's got more than enough horsepower to do this, but that still looks faintly ridiculous. So just gone three in the afternoon, and we have uh, the baling and uh, the collection of the bales. We need to get them off the field. And we've got the... Whoa! Oh, man. This isn't going to work. Look at that. That's lifting. The pickup is lifting. The tracks are off the ground. No! That's a disaster. That's awful. I'm not going to be able to do this with this baler. We're going to have to find a different solution. And that's wasted 415 litres. But yeah, this baler, not going to work. So, plan B. We are going to get rid of this baler. Let's drop this off here. Actually, I can just return the lease, can't I? Let's go into here. It's not in that. Still just going to return it. I wish I could get that, that wasted uh, hay out of there, but nothing I can do. Right. Let's... Return that. Yes. Okay. And then we'll pop into the shop. There is only one baler that we can use with this tractor then. And it's going to be this one, I think. Uh, how much is... Well, I yeah. It's going to be this one. So we'll lease this one instead. That's going to cost us 1,122 to do that. So with that bought, we can head back out here and go and hook it up. Oh, I am supremely disappointed that that, uh, that, that case baler didn't work. We've got to use this massive one. Even this massy baler looks massive on this tractor. There are mods out there, and we may be able to find another mod that will work with this. Okay, it's not lifting it off the ground. Uh, here's hoping this works instead. So here we go. Back at the farm. We've got the little Massey Ferguson Baylor. We're going to unfold it. We don't have our PTO connected. Turn it on. Drop it down. And okay. This, this is working. Now here's the bit I was talking about earlier where I'd managed to create two win rows at once. I'm hoping our baler is going to pick up both of them. And yes, it does. Uh, works absolutely perfectly. My only worry about this is we're going to have to get the auto stacker for this. So that's going to add a little bit of time to what we've got to do today. Uh, the other thing that's, uh, that's worrying me a little bit is our little uh, front loader is not very big. Uh, and if we're going to use the auto stacker and create 8,000 litre bales from this, 
I'm very, very worried that that, that little front loader isn't going to be able to handle that weight of bale. So this could still be a problem. Uh, we may have to get the landy on the trailer and just pick up. Uh, try and pick it up close and uh, and get as close as possible. I don't know how many bales we're going to get off here now, um, but it's it's going to be quite interesting. It is going to make it a bit easier for us to handle bales because we can always cut uh, one of these bales apart and uh, and then or one of the stacks apart and then go and feed that to the sheep. Uh, all is not lost. This is still working, and we are still making progress. We got quite a lot of bales on this field now. Look at that. That's uh, that's a nice number. Uh, it's probably gonna create four or five stacks, I think, uh, which is a, a decent amount. I am looking at our setup here though, and thinking long term, we'll probably not do baling going forwards, considering uh, how much trouble this little tractor has with anything bigger than this baler. Uh, and instead, I think what we'll do is uh, maybe see if we can find a forage wagon that either fits on this or that we can get. There, there is a little uh, forage wa uh, forage wagon mod I think that's available. So uh, yeah, I wanna I wanna look at that and see if I can get that and and sort that on here a little bit better, and then maybe get a hay a hay loft a hay barn for us to do instead. Mm -hmm. We've got 62%. I don't think there is enough hanging around this field to finish this off. I think we're basically there. So we will stop that, unload these last couple of bales. And as it comes to five in the afternoon, I'll go and pick that one off the back. Uh, as it comes to five in the afternoon, we need to go and get the auto stacker, get this field finished off. And then we will be in a position to get it rolled today. And yeah, we do have to roll it today because it's going to start regrowing next game day. Wouldn't it be the end of the world if we didn't, to be honest? Um, but it would set the regrowth back a little bit. We do need to do this. So we need to get the auto stacker now, which is this one. 64,000 that costs. Compared to the 22 for the baler. Uh, leasing this uh, costs us 3,264. And you can see why I don't particularly want to keep these uh, around. Because it is quite an expense. So let's go and collect it up. Over here. There we go. Yeah, here's to hoping that this fairly large stacker... I didn't see what the uh, power requirements on this is. Uh, no power requirements. Okay, hopefully this will be fine. It, again, looks slightly ridiculous on the back of here, but not as bad as I've seen some other stuff. What we can do with this is speed up getting to the next job because... Uh, we can just come and unload these at the side. So I open you up. There we are. And not having any problems. So that's good. Should be able to clear this field off fairly quickly. So be careful and, uh, and line things up right like so. We'll be able to get these all collected up quickly. And then we can just dump these bales at the side of the field. And save ourselves a little bit of time in the long run. Uh, and make sure that everything is uh, ready for us to roll stuff before the end of the day as well. So I'm going to try and do is get these to unload against this wall. And see if we can, uh, see if we can get them to stack here vertically so if i do that and un unload this here like so position it right hopefully and unload no that's fine we'll uh we can then just yeah just put that down there like that and put those under there and that should work fine for what we're trying to do i am finding that this is lifting 
this off here a little bit. So, yeah, we are getting a little bit of lift of our tractor at times. So I'm very much thinking the forage wagon way is the way to go. So I'm going to look into that and uh, and see what we can do about doing it that way instead. You can see here how much it's having trouble getting traction at times. And it just... Yeah, and then you lift it out and you can see the bottom of the tractor fall down. So even this is a little bit too much for this tractor height-wise. It's easily got the horsepower. It's just too small to actually properly use this piece of equipment. So uh, we've got three full bales off here, though, which is good news. We've got four bales left. So, uh, yeah, we'll have a, a smaller one of these, which I'll load off here and then uh, and then cut up afterwards. Just to uh, keep it a little bit more. There we go. But, yeah. Yeah, look at that. It just sort of winds all over the place. All in all, though, I'm pretty pleased with this. We've got a fair amount done on here today. Oh, man. And we've got all this cleared. It is 7 in the evening. So we're going to pick up the rolling next time. We will get a growth stage on this grass uh, in the meantime. But that should be fine. Uh, next time is going to be very much clearing things up. And getting things into a position where we're ready to get the olive harvest. Sorry, the grape harvest started. And, uh, and when we do that... What we're going to do is switch to two-day months so that we have plenty of time to get all of that done. Uh, that will then fulfill the promise of this farm and have us set up a vineyard starting from scratch, which is brilliant. Right, I'm just going to cut this open because you could, you would be able to unload four, um, but it just sort of doesn't give you just four bales so we'll cut that open and put these here that way we can always come and sort this out later but i think going forward we're not we're not going to use small bales going forward we will just use uh we'll we'll get hold of a forage wagon and go that way so fold this up and bring this into here and yeah we will return these two bits because we're not going to be doing any grass work for a little while. So in here. I want to return the baler. Yes. Okay. And return the bale loader as well. And that's got both of those done. And uh, yeah. That is really all we've got a chance to do today on the farm. Sun is still up. But there's, yeah. It's getting on. So we're going to pick it up next time. And get that field rolled. Uh, for now, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.